Okay. I think we just need to level our weapons then. Yeah, I am on like uh, sword plus one. I could probably. But I don't even know if thing. I have uh, if I have the smithing materials to upgrade my weapon any further. Oh, you're looking. Let me, like, let me let me take a peek. I don't feel like we, yeah, we're yeah, too far ahead. I, do. I don't think I do. I got some for you if you need it. We just gotta get the levels, though. I honestly said, think we can take this guy. You think as, so? As naive as it sounds, I, I totally think we could... Oh, yeah, I totally think we could take this guy. All right, let's do it. I mean, like, if, if Hob can do it, we can do it. Oh, dude. <laughs> you know, I, I appreciate Hob as an entertainer. I love watching his streams. But I'm like, bro... If we played Elden Ring, we could no hit the game. Yeah, I mean, if that's all you play, like, how hard could it be? Yeah. The game's only like a hundred hours long. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't there people now that like they no hit the game on like a dance pad and stuff? Like, gamer inflation is getting crazy, man. Bro, I saw someone beat Melania in Morris Code, and I said, <laughs> "What? Nothing's left, man. Well, there's nothing left." You try to come up with like cool ideas to do, like someone beat it with a banana and two wires. How? Like, what the heck, man? Back in our day, you were like a stud if you could beat the game. Much less like you know, beat it with some kind of self-imposed challenge. You know, I we we would play. I would go to my friend's house to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. They would be like, I can't get this hidden tape. Can you help me? On the on the Phoenix level, where you gotta do like 17 grinds in the air. I was like the go I was the Harvey Keitel from Pulp Fiction of that hidden tape. Go to my friend's birthday party, he's like, yo, real quick, can you get that hidden tape on Phoenix for me? <laughs> <clears throat> Nowadays I'm nothing, man. Oh, you beat the game? Oh, but you leveled the oh, but you used this weapon, but oh, but you uh Use the controller. Oh, but you didn't set up the Neuralink directly to your brain. Like, it's crazy, man. It's different out there, man. And talking about like viral content. So I saw this tweet. Do you know how old Mr. Beast is? Yeah, he's 26. That, I thought he was like 35, man. He's already cracked YouTube. We cracked YouTube when he was what, 20 years old? Like what is left for this guy? I don't know, like, maybe like finding some intrinsic meaning to life. What do you mean? He just turned 26. He's giving away 26 Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even knocking him. I'm just like, okay, so now you won YouTube. Now now the hard part. What, what are you going to do next? Well, that's that's how I feel. Like when, when you peak so early, it's like, what what do you do? I you mean, know what like, I mean? Maybe he's content. You know, maybe he's like, I, if, if he's 80 and he's giving away 80 Teslas, he's like, that's the dream life for him. I don't know. There's <laughs> lots of different people out there. You know what? Take me. No hit. Hitless. Chat, why? Look, I'm just going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that guy. Why does chat not like Mr. Beast? Everyone uh, like, oh, he's, uh, he's unhappy. He Why do people not like Mr. Beast? Did he do so? Did he get do something that I missed? I think you that uh, that any uh, disdain towards Mr. Beast, uh, you may just not like his content first, but then also he's like so emblematic of like the like rise and grind hustle culture, like the only meaning of life is like getting to the top of your business sort of culture that he catches strays as a result of that. Like it, it, even in personal interviews that he's given, like his whole reason for living is to like optimize getting as many views on YouTube as possible, which a lot of people might look at as sort of like a, a life devoid of any extra meaning. I don't hate him as an individual. I do find like, uh, the i don't know i don't even know what word to use that's not offensive but like the obsession with like constantly growing your metrics even though you have like more success and money that you, you and the people in your life could possibly need for like the rest of your life i find that kind of strange but but doesn't he do a lot of philanthropy stuff like yeah like, like yeah 
That's good. But I guess my question is, when he says like all that hustle stuff, does he give any context? Like, hey, you can still do YouTube and not be like this? Well, I don't think like that's his responsibility. Yeah. Like, I don't think he has to do. And also, it is important to keep in mind, like, 26 is still super young. Like, yeah, it's nuts. Like, he, you know, he, I might be at 26. I might have been more like him than I am like myself at 35. So I'm not trying to like damn him or anything like that. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, do you, sort you, of feel like you're, at some you're point. You're putting about 10 Isaacs a day. True. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I also, I don't know. I just find like, I'm not making better content than Mr. Beast. That's ridiculous. But I, I don't know, the older I get, the more I find, like, all this, like, con just making content for the sake of it being watched, kind of, like, detestable. Like, I don't care if you drop the Lamborghini into a garbage, <laughs> a trash compactor, or, like, fucking, you know, shot a private plane into a volcano. Like, I don't, I don't care what, like, a $10 million a night hotel looks like. Like, I, want, I, I need some art, man. I'm okay, like, I mean ma making trash, don't get me wrong. I just don't like, I don't want to be like, wow, this guy's making the best trash, you know? Like it's, it's good for him and I, I have nothing against him, but like, I don't need like a, 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 a David Letterman interview with Mr. Beast that's like, so what was going through your head when you made Squid Game uh, ages zero to 100 version four? Wow, and your magnum opus. One thousand dollar flight versus one million dollar flight. Like, what, what, what were you speaking to? The, the innate truths in the human condition with that one. Like, what, what motivated you to make that? Yeah, but come on, you and I both know we'd both click on if you put a Lamborghini or a trash compactor. I, I, I swear it to you, I'm not putting on airs. I wouldn't. I you would rather just... watch. I would rather watch like a music video for a song I liked when I was 21 that I've seen 35 times. See, I think you're placating to your audience right now. I'm, I'm zero gonna... percent. I don't watch YouTube. Neither do I, but if someone put a Lamborghini into a trash compactor, I'm seeing what happens. It's gonna get compact? Yeah, but... What else they're, could they're possibly gonna, happen? They're gonna put a stranger walking by and get their reaction. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> Sometimes Kate will like watch a Mr. Beast video, so I've seen a few. But like, I don't know, I just couldn't imagine. Well, I don't know, it's just not my scene, let's put it that way. I don't think there's I, anything I, wrong, I, there's people making way worse stuff. Have you seen like the YouTube channels that are like, you know, top 10, like a uh, child in uh, court freakouts? Like this 13 year old just got sentenced to life in prison. And then it's like an AI generated thumbnail with like tears coming down their face. Like that stuff is like, the erosion of society to the extreme. I just don't yeah. really care for the stuff that like Mr. Beast makes. Is that I don't think it makes him like a a, a villain necessarily. No, I mean like, I think I've seen probably three or four Mr. Beast videos, but whenever I see the thumbnail and the the title, I'm like, oh, I want to watch this one day, and then I just never watch it. But he comes, I he's he comes up with just crazy <clears throat> concepts though. No, like, that true. doesn't intrigue you at all. Like, I was buried alive for a week? Like, you're like, bro, you don't want to see him panic? <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess I just don't care. I don't, again, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm just like, I don't, I, I, I'm, and I'm guilty of participating in it. Don't get me wrong. I just had this opinion that there's like way too many like YouTube videos out there, man. Yeah, I'm like with you. not not to knock my wife's preferences. You like what you like, and Lord knows she listens to the music in the car that I put on, and she's like, "Why does this guy listen to music from like 1972?" But like sometimes she'll put on like these travel vlogs where it's just like a dude in Japan, and he like goes to the convenience store and eats instant ramen, and then <laughs> like it's just subtitled, and they're reviewing it like it's a five star restaurant. And it's like the 80th time I've seen someone review like a Yoshinoya beef bowl or something like that as if it's uh, the fat duck. And I'm like, what? Are, don't we have enough of this, man? Don't we have just... I know, I know the Yoshinoya beef bowl, man. Like we're... we're I mean, I, I know we got enough Balatro episodes out there. Don't get me wrong. But if someone said, hey, NL, aren't there enough Balatro episodes? I'd be like, yeah, but people keep watching them and I got mortgage payments to make. I'm not gonna be like, you know, elevated about it. Like I'm making art. <clears throat> oh man. No, I mean, 
I do think there's a lot of YouTube, but also there's a lot of humans on the planet. Like people That's like to true. watch all kind of stuff. You know, it's true. You like what you like. Like I still listen to like economics podcasts. I don't. That don't work in finance. I'm like, oh, the S and P 500 is up like you know, 92 basis points today. Better listen to Animal Spirits. See what's up. What's uh? Let's just do a little leveling. Just trust me on this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Of course. What's Animal Spirits? It's just a podcast. It's just a. It's just a reference. Is it Apollo podcast? Is it Apollo podcast? What do you mean by that? Is it about furries? No, it's about oh. economics. <laughs> well, why is it called Animal Spirits? Oh, bear versus bull. You got it. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know how I remember that? A bear swipes down, a bull swipes up. Uh, I've heard that before. Isn't that that's the answer, right? Bear is bad. I think bull the, is well, good. bear bear is is bad for sellers. Bear is markets going down. Correct. Okay. I'm just thinking you could probably see a bear throw an uppercut. I'm just saying, like, as, as a biologist, I'm not sure that it's necessary. If it helps you remember it, that's fine. But I'm not sure if it holds in the animal kingdom. Mm, that's fair. I think it's if it's life or death. Do you, do you think you could subdue a baby bear? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think I could trick then, it at least. We're talking like a cub under the age yep. of three months. Yeah. No shot. Like, like, like he's, he's toast. I pick him up and just bash his head in on a rock or something. No, I'm just saying subdue until animal control gets there, not bash it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm saying, like, can you hold one down with your strength? Like a citizen's arrest? You were a fine yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the fan here by the this yeah, you ever yeah. Think about, I think I probably could. If you, if you had to, if you had to go into a life of uh, not have to, but say you know sometimes there's like part-time firefighters and stuff mm. that do it on a volunteer basis. Yeah. What would your part-time public service be? Honestly, I don't know if this is sidestepping the question, but I, yeah. I feel like I'm answering it honestly. I feel like I could be one of those dudes who like the city gives a, a sharp stick to. And then I like walk around picking up garbage in the parks. So you'd be a parks and rec guy? Yeah, I like being in the park. I, I don't mind picking up garbage. Although it does feel a little nihilistic, like picking up litter in the park, knowing it's just gonna go like to a landfill and litter there instead, I guess. But, you know, I guess we you try not to think about it. Why don't we burn more garbage? Dude, that's what I've been saying. And people are like, oh, it like releases too much pollution. Okay, then like burn it and catch the fumes in like a big balloon or something like that. <laughs> like how hard could it be? We're, and we're then you smart send the balloon people. off to space. Exactly. And you it. it just floats anyway, dude. Oh, I fucking died. <laughs> Sorry. Well, so like I've recently, I don't want to get too much into it, but I recently moved into like a less suburban area. Mm. And whenever I'm driving around, I just see these big piles of people burning like trees and stuff. Yeah, in the country, and people like, just burn things. Yeah. And I'm like, man, like back in the suburbs, like you got to put it in a brown bag and you got to wait for the day. And then I'm oh, like, oh, you had this... too much recycling this week. We can't take that much. Yeah, I know what but you're But I'm saying. like, this takes up way less space. So why doesn't everyone burn? Oh, I'm washed. Yeah, when I lived in the country, people were burning their garbage, like, nonstop. They were also, I mean, like, I'm throwing just... <laughs> aluminum cans out of their pickup truck window as they drove. But, like, you know, <laughs> you take the good with the bad. I mean, I'm not talking garbage, but, like, any kind of lawn refuge, that thing's going up in smoke, man. And it looked kind of fun, too. Well, it's fire. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever, are you allowed to have bonfires in your new neighborhood no <laughs> that would be no. frowned upon no. for sure no i'm saying like bonfire in one of those like metal <clears> things <throat> i mean i guess if you had like a if you had a pit in your backyard yeah who's gonna stop you right but no they make stuff at costco it's like almost like a, like a natural brazier. gas hookup uh no like a brazier it's just like a metal I think it's a, a brazier yeah that's what i said <laughs> brazier <laughs> Yeah, like, they don't do those in Canada? Yeah, you can. 
Oh, you just that's not something that like you wouldn't have you wouldn't have one of those have a couple IPAs and a couple neighbors over on a Well, it would take up like probably 40% of our backyard, so They're not that big. Neither is our yard. <laughs> what are you talking about mowing then? It, well, we got you got to mow the the back, you got to mow the front, you got to mow the sides. It's just like getting a haircut. Can I quote chat? Why not just get clovers? That I don't even want to talk about that because it, it, it really riles people up. People people take the con, condominium dwellers who live in large concrete boxes love to lawn shame. So they go they go crazy for it. Hey, but before you go, before you go, if you haven't done it yet, rest yeah. at the bonfire, hit flasks, and add as many charges to your flask as you can. Okay. There's uh wait, what was that? What was that little move you just did? This one right here. Yeah. Oh, oh. No, no, no. Yeah, well, how do you do that? That's just uh, rapidly stimming by pressing the block button as fast <laughs> as you can if you're not doing anything else. Hold on, hit the block button? Oh, let me try it. No, that... L2? <laughs> what, what, L1? I don't even know what the block button is. You don't know is. what the block yeah. button is? I never use block <clears throat> in this game. What button is it? It's LB. Oh. <laughs> kind of sick, right? So, so this is like a kind of fairly big local news story, probably six months, maybe, no, it might have been last spring. Anyways, there's this lady who lived in a suburb, spent like 15 years making her entire front lawn out of clovers. And there's this landscaping company that was like treating, a, treating someone else's lawn, whatever, you know, miracle oh, grower, no. whatever, debug. They put it up. They got the address wrong and dumped it all <laughs> over <Clover. laughs> There was like a five-page article with all the neighbors, everyone from the community oh, saying no. you ruined 15 years of work. And that was the first time I ever heard of someone having clovers for a lawn. I think and it's like, good. <clears throat> Sorry, a little mucus. <clears throat> I think it's but, good, but I think it doesn't look as good as grass. So because so what it's do my you do? house, I'm gonna I'm gonna pluck it. But the, so basically, you just plant clovers. It looks like grass that doesn't grow, and you never have to cut it. I mean, or water clo it. clover is just like. Wait, let me cough this out for a sec. Clover is like um, yeast. I feel like it just grows naturally in the air. And that, like, if you leave your dirt alone long enough, you'll find clover on it. And then, so then what do you do? Then you dig up that clover and you give it to someone with a clover lawn so they grow more? No, you just let it propagate. Well, how does someone have a clover lawn? I don't understand. You just don't pluck it and then it, then it grows. Okay, but let me ask you this. So you have a front lawn. How yeah. would you make that only clover? Um, I mean, I guess at that point, I would probably go to like a, a garden store and buy clover seeds. And that's it. Yeah, but like we don't really need to because we're like clover up to the gills right now. I don't know if it's just like a Vancouver thing, but like, like we got clover coming out of our ears. Got it. I just don't think <laughs> I don't think it looks as good. I don't know. I've I never like seen I've I never like seen a lawn. clover lawn. Do people have them in Vancouver? Um, you'll see them. I, I would say like you don't see that many full clover lawns, but you see lots of like um, like mixed vegetation lawns. It is better for for pollinators for sure. Do you see clover lawns more or less often than you see a sports car wrapped in an anime wrap? Uh, well, I don't about the same. <laughs> <laughs> You think I'll ever do a garden? We have one. We have one. You do? Yeah, yeah. What's it? You never told me what's in it. Because I don't know what's in it. There was there was stuff in it when we moved in, and uh, we didn't plant anything. All we did was like pluck the weeds. But then what like is it? we don't really know what we're doing. So like in our first winter, like probably like sixty percent of the plants died. But then you know they're plants. There's more. I got so, so it's not like you're growing potatoes or something. Right, yeah. I mean, we don't have that kind of real estate here. I'm content well, to just go to the grocery store. 
Hydroponics, brother. I don't think we're going to be setting up hydroponics. I mean, because we have so much space taken up by the uh, smokeless brazier in our backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a grill? Yeah. Are you, are you grilling? I, I, I've been known to grill. Where are you? I just went to, I went to get my souls back. We need to get a Bonnie level up and get the heck out of here. We don't need to level up. We need to level up our weapons. Okay. Our levels should be pretty good. Although neither of us are leveling vigor, I assume. I did a little bit just because for the Whoa! sake of- Whoa! Well, what, you're, you're dragging me down, brother. I didn't realize. I'm, a... I'm, do I'm dodging for two people here. That's a- uh... I didn't even oh, want to say it, but half of these Godric fights, I feel like I'm up in his grill 90% of the time, and then you're just hanging out at the back with the little opera goggles out. Me? Because you're messing, you're messing up my rhythm. I'm like, oh, let, let me let, let, give him the benefit of the rhythm, and mm. I'll just kind of I'll pay the, play the asynchronous staccato for Miles Davis. That's actually fair, you know, because you get an advantage by being the person that the boss targets a little bit. I can understand that. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can dance I, if you want to. It's like you're trying to like riff on somebody else's like improv. You're trying to insert your way into a conversation where there's already two people locked in topic with each other. Yeah, and it's like, you know, you, you just kind of, if you see a, a, some room to do like a quick rim shot, you do it. If not, then you just stay back. The great ones do. Well, Lord's uh, Sworn Short Sword level one was not doing it, but level two... It's guaranteed. It's on site, Godric. Do you need a stone? I need three stones. <laughs> I think we can buy. Can't you buy? Oh, does he in? sell them? Someone sells them. I can sell things to him. Chat. A rim shot is something in drumming. Where's my D A E R slash drummers at? Yeah, I got two smithing stones. I can oh, drop. Uh, for you. Apparently, inside hall. The man sells them. Inside hall. They should really consolidate, man. Like, this is crazy. Like, why don't you just move your smithing store next to the blacksmith store? And then you would both benefit. I mean, I'd like to see you as a civil engineer, man. You make some big changes. Um, I, have, I have two extra if you need it. I think I could just buy them. Okay. I hope I can just buy them. It's fun. It's amazing to me. We have not found any armor. Nothing. We have nothing. I mean, I think you're still wearing like the pants I dropped for you. We're we're broke, man. Hmm. I don't. I don't. I was lied to. These people don't sell anything. We need to upgrade the store to buy stuff. You know what I was thinking, man. Why does every, you, you go see a movie, you know what they don't have at the start of the movie? 22 minute what? tutorial. Oh, you can't get to the second act of the movie because you haven't met this NPC in a completely different area of the game. What, what about just, you, you start the game and you're like, this looks like Mario, press A to jump, it works. What, what happened, <laughs> man? What, ha what ha we might, we, why did we make it so complicated? Oh, wait, wait, you where, know, what, where did you uh, vote for? Let's go south and just, let's get some Okay, to, so to the first step. Bro, your character looks like the guy from uh, Ted Lasso. So true, I imagine. Stranded oh, Graveyard. It's just, it's the southernmost one. That's where, that's the tutorial spawn though, isn't it? Oh, let's go to first step. Why, why, why don't we go to Gatefront and then follow the road to the, the southeast? Gate front is just north of the first step. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, let's go there. <clears throat> One more time. We're so back. No vote in progress. Okay. One more. There we go. We're in. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm with you. Any any game that gives me a tutorial to start automatically minus twenty percent on Metacritic. 
I don't even mean this to be rude because I play a lot of indie games and I, I tend to like them. But I'm, I, I can't play any more games that start with like a 10 minute tutorial about like, oh, I'm doing my homework and then like a witch cast a spell on me that broke my house and then blah, 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 blah. And then you start playing the game and you're like, oh, it's Mario. That's what we were doing the cutscene for <laughs> is I'm jumping on platforms and like hitting blocks and g grabbing mushrooms and stuff like that. Like, what do we? You, you don't need to be more than Mario. Don't just just be Mario. That's OK. What's you know, Mr. You know what, Derek? Mr. You did for the Spelunky tutorial. There's there's caveman paintings on the back of a wall. That's all it is. You want to learn how to jump? Just look at the caveman painting. Dude, that's just, it. Exactly. Just a couple of etchings on the ground that say like, you know, use E to use a bomb. That's all you need. Whoa, chill, bro. I, I don't know when that, you know what? I hope someone clips that and then plays it at an indie dev software dev thing. You're going to get you me know, killed. I know there's someone out there that runs it. I know there's someone out there that runs an indie expo like in in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, look, please take that and clip it. You're gonna make an indie dev a lot of money. Just like Ryan did for Bellatro. <laughs> Dude, we really, the, the Bellatro <laughs> haters the back are, into that I <laughs> wish, man, I wish. The, the Bellatro haters are driving me crazy. People, are, they're literally typing in my Discord, I'm so sick of Bellatro, can't wait till like, six out of ten roguelite comes out i'm like no disrespect that that game might be perfectly fine you're doing it a disservice by comparing it to Bellatro. what you should be doing is saying like hey you should also check out this game instead of like you know oh bill's dungeon comes out in may it's totally going to dethrone Bellatro. <laughs> Bellatro is like a one once every like five years type of game and people don't appreciate it they don't appreciate it enough I, I'm with you, I, I, but I, I think because it's so polarizing, I think, ooh, we finally got something. Uh, I think that's what makes it special is that you got people that are just, are. ooh, look at this drip. I got a waffle helmet. Did you get one? <laughs> I got. I think I got the shirt. Uh, it's just that people either, oh, ooh. you look like Cody Rhodes. You Let's know what? Go. Yeah, hang, on, um, hang on, hang on. Let me, uh, Yeah. I'm going to figure out how to do this. You no longer look like Cody Rhodes. I am going. Sure. <laughs> I don't have much on at all, honestly. I am going to. Oh, they made games too complicated, man. We got to go back to like 1922. Um, I think I think you should have the full set bonus. Oh, you don't have to do that, but I'm glad you did. Um, I got stuff. Look, like don't don't worry about me. I'll I'll piece something together. Would uh would you be upset if I told you that I had that and I just was never wearing it? <laughs> no, that's okay. No sweat. <laughs> Let me see if I can <clears throat> Like I, I I'm not trying to say Elden Ring is bad. It's obviously a great game. You go to your inventory, how many effing tabs do you need? Tools, ashes, crafting materials, bolstering materials, key items, sorceries, incantations, ashes of war, melee armaments. <clears throat> ranged weapons, catalysts, arrows, bolts, shields, head, chest, arms, legs, talismans, info. It never ends, man. That's like 40 <laughs> tabs. I feel like I'm running a general store in the Wild West or something. <laughs> you, you hear this guy? I mean, yeah, let's, let's go give him some oi. <laughs> Where's he at? <laughs> nah, I mean... Oh, there he is. Is that Patches? Stop pretending you can't see me. You see him? I don't, I don't see remember him. this encounter. Is he a sheep? I don't see me. Are you a sheep? You're just swinging right off the bat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see in the bushes? Why not? Do you hear him? I don't. I don't hear him. You may have lost him. Well, honestly, no, but his, I get the same loss, thing. His loss. There's. Oh, he's over here. Could you help us out, Cully? He's somewhere around here. <laughs> you, yes, you hear him? There. I hear him. Stop pretending you can't see me. Honest, it's on sight. As soon as I see this guy, it's on sight. 
Do some rolling. <laughs> no, there's people that like will die on the hill for Bellatro and people that will go into chat. They'll be like, oh, you're playing Bellatro, bye. I know, and it's like, crazy. <laughs> and I get it if it's like a, a mid-tier game, but it's not. I mean, it's, why it's do you think, incredible. Why, why, let me ask this. Let's dissect, let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's dissect the brain of a Bellatro hater. Why do you think, what could be a reason why someone doesn't like Bellatro? Gamba? Uh, no, I think they just like, you know, it, it's just not their scene for whatever reason. Maybe they find it, it boring. Or I, the thing that gets me, and again, I, you ever feel as streamers like you're not allowed to be insane anymore? Like you, your opinion has to be representative of like the norm. You can't just be like, here's one out of the pocket. Here's one out of the pocket for you. I think our society has a disease where a current great thing can never live up to the potential of new thing that doesn't exist yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, thing that I already have, yeah, it was good, but it's like a little bit played out. You know you know what's gonna be even better than that? Thing that doesn't exist yet, which has a 98% chance to be worse than current thing. And then when current, when that comes out and it becomes the current thing, people are like, yeah, but it's no Bellatro. <laughs> I got a thousand hours out of Bellatro and it was only 20 bucks. This one's $23 and I only got 112 hours out of it. <laughs> kind of a ripoff, honestly. So we're, we, we live in a sick planet, man, I think is what I'm trying to say. I mean, so the first grade is smell the roses while you got the roses instead of when you're stuck with clover because all the roses are dead. That's what I'm, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. You got me 100%. Yeah. That's why, like, you yeah, know, well, most, you... most exciting uh, gaming event of the year is never, like, great game coming out. It's always, like, oh, a game got announced at E3. Can't wait to see it come out in seven years. If Microsoft <laughs> doesn't shutter the studio after the game came out, got a 92 on Metacritic, and sold, like, two million copies. <laughs> Dishonored? Is that the game you're talking about? I was going for Hi-Fi Rush, but, I mean, I think it applies uh -huh. to some of the Arcane Austin games as well. What is Hi-Fi Rush? It's uh, it was a Microsoft game that came out last year. It's kind of like uh, Jet Set Radio meets uh, Ultra Kill. Mm. I'm uh, I'm I'm a believer in in Smell in the Roses for sure, <clears throat> but I think it applies to streams too. Like, what's the number one thing that the most annoying chatter will say to you when they join the chat? Oh, when is this segment over? Like, literally, you just popped into the stream, you have no context for where we're at, and you're like, oh, mm, Balatro, what's he playing next? Like, just relax, bro. Like, really? Like, that's where we're at? We got adult human beings who are like, mm, the, the flashing lights accompanying the banter are not the genre of flashing light I prefer. Like, are you a moth? We're human beings, man. We got greater capacity than this. We gotta hold ourselves to a higher standard. <laughs> what are you, a moth? That's that's a top twenty NL <laughs> quote, Chad. That that that's potential tombstone stuff. All right. Me at nine forty six p.m. on a weekday. <laughs> Oh, man. Balatro banter sucks, though. Yeah, guy, guy who's been asking me, like, what my favorite sandwich topping is for six months and getting ignored. The banter <laughs> sucks. You, would, you, would you use jelly or jam? I, and I, when you played Isaac, we used to answer important questions like that. Hey, Anel, ever eat lunch in your car? Of course, bro. I live in North America. It's every day. Guys, a plus two factory right now. <laughs> oh, man. Do you ever eat lunch in your car? Uh, why? Wait, it's not a personal question. It's not like asking if you're depressed. I it mean, said, well, when you said like everyone does it, I'm like, bro. The only time I do that is if it's like code red. <laughs> like. like Unless something's gone terribly, terribly wrong for the day, I'm not eating my car. Really? Like, would you, you like if you went to McDonald's, would you rather yeah. eat it in the restaurant or in your car? By myself? Yeah, yeah. In the restaurant. I'd rather eat it in my car, 
Bro, you're cramped. You got a seatbelt on. If you drop a fry, you're not, it's gonna. You'll find it three months later. Well, I'm not dropping First. a fry. That's step one. Bro, it's just I've not gonna happen. Step. I've seen step you play two. Elden Ring. You drop fries. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Is it more cramped? Sure, but I don't need that much space to eat a hamburger. Like it's, it's just it's it's got chairs in it. That's all I need. And like I got I got my own private environment. I can crank up the AC. I can listen to whatever I want to listen to on the radio. Let me tell you this. I don't remember anything six months ago, but I do remember one one day I had like a doctor's appointment and I had like 45 minutes to kill before I had to uh, get my kids from school. Yeah. And I saw a Burger King. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? You know what would just make this day amazing? I guess going Daddy's into turn. the Yeah. <laughs> going into the Burger King, ordered from the counter. Wow. They gave me a plastic tray, took it over, sat into like a hard plastic booth that was pristinely just sprayed and wiped down. And I just sat there, looked around at the other senior citizens eating by themselves. I just gave them a nod. And I can rem I can tell you intimate details about that lunch that I could never tell you about the last time I ate at lunch in my car. I can believe, you know, there's something about being in the arena, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I can understand it. I don't mind eating in the restaurant. I'll have a McDonald's Bro, breakfast in the restaurant. That doesn't bother me. I, the other thing, too, I never noticed so many browns in Burger King in my life. Everything is brown. Everywhere you look, brown, brown <laughs> wrapping, brown, brown napkins, everything. It's what like, about, the, was the they, tray like a beige or was the tray yes, red? Yes. Because I'm it, thinking it's of like, red. They have, a, they have a, a Photoshop color palette. It's like brown, red, and green. That's it. Mm. There's, that's it. It is like, it's got to be the beigest fast food restaurant for sure. Yeah, and I kind of like, like, you know, when a, when a company sticks to a color palette that's a little bit avant-garde, I'm all about that. Yeah, I kind of miss when fast food restaurants used to be ugly instead of, like, all looking <laughs> like, a, you know, like a graphic design shop or something like that. All right, I'm not trying to date you because I yeah, don't know yeah. if you... Did you ever experience any... If you have, and I feel sorry for you, did you ever experience McDonald's when you used to order something and it came in a foam box? Did you no, ever get that? No, it's, it's you never gotta got be foam like, box? it's gotta be maybe like three or four years before my time at Max. Oh. Like, I, I was always uh, in the cardboard box era. Oh, uh, it tasted so much better in the styrofoam. <laughs> uh, sorry, planet, but it's true. You opened up and you heard that little <laughs> of the styrofoam just grinding against each other. You took out that Big Mac and. Bro, they don't... It's so good. Well, if you love it so much, you could probably just head down to the landfill and get the same <laughs> box you had <laughs> from 1992. But here's the thing. How can someone make something that you... that is like a container mm. that doesn't eventually break down? Like, why didn't they think of that? Well, it, I think, like, when they invented styrofo uh, styrofoam, they were like, holy cow, it doesn't break down. And everybody was like, yeah! <laughs> And then, like, two years later, they were like, oh, wait, it doesn't break down. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. I think, how many souls do you have? 5,000. You want to go plus up, plus two our, our weapons, and we, then go fight Big Daddy? We No, I want to fight. There's got to be a boss here that's easier for us to fight. Okay. There's got to be a Bonnie. There's got to be a boss. And then, like, we're far enough away from beating Godric. I don't think, like, an extra two levels of strength is going to make a difference. <laughs> like, this is a boss right here. We just need to find the associated bonfire. Just in case we die? Or do you just spawn here anyway, now that I think about it? I think as long as we both don't die, we're okay. There's a stake nearby. That's right. A stick. Somewhere in here. You just spawn here. Okay. <clears throat> it's every day, bro. I hear you. I guess I'd enter the Ever Jail. It's Ever Gal. Uh, serious question for you, though. Yeah, yeah. With, with, because I know you kind of gave it up, but with all the games that you've played, and I mean, this is not. This is not. <clears throat> This is not inflating your ego and it's not you being whatever. Do you have any desire to design a game? No. Why? Don't you think you could at least outline a good one? Mm, no. I think that it probably appears easy from the outside, but probably is like really difficult. 
See, that's it. I knew you were going to give like some like baited answer like it's that. It's not baited. Bro, you played 8,000 games. Here's the difference between me and the average person. The average person would look at the fact that 80% of games suck ass and be like, why don't they just make them good? I look at the fact that 80% of games suck ass and go, man, making a good game must be really hard. Because they got experience, they got a team, they got resources, etc., etc., and they're still, like, messing it up <laughs> regularly. So then I'm going to step in, like, presumptuously and be like, well, I've got 10,000 hours in the Binding of Isaac. I know what so I this, like, this for sure. This is the answer sure. I didn't want you to give. I wanted you to give the real answer. Be like, yeah, I could make a very simple game that's probably better than 90% of the trash out there. I think that, I mean, I no, I, I also, like, it just seems like, you know, you've eaten a lot of meals. Do you ever want to open a restaurant? Nah, man. It seems, no. it, <laughs> seems hard. They keep going out of business. You will not see me Ooh. in in all likelihood becoming one of those uh, like YouTubers who starts like a game design or or game development studio. And I, you, it's not a knock; it's the opposite. I think it's too hard for me when we already work in the easiest business of all time. We uh, our business has like zero <laughs> risk associated with it entirely. Like you, you, you probably saw when you did your taxes this year. You were looking over your receipts. How much money did you put into your business annually? <laughs> well, <laughs> like you're making a large you're making you're making a large assumption. Oh, I, you did set up a new office, I guess. No. Okay. Take a step step further back. I don't even know. I have no idea. I haven't done my taxes yet. <laughs> even wow! I've got, se I've got seven emails from my accountant saying like, "Hey, I need this and this," and I just push them down but Bro, I, I, heard. I go from streaming <laughs> to hanging out with the kids to cutting i know to i know Little League. I, don't, I don't got time for this tax stuff man like i'm i'm with you but like also i would like to be able to sleep at night which is nice but <laughs> but like is, I, I also heard that like in the u.s you basically the irs will just give you an extension like no questions asked which i mean it, yeah. it sounds great but apparently the reason they do that is because like 95% of normies, the IRS like owes them money when they file, so they don't care if you're like late <laughs> as long as you file the extension. But like if, if you owe them money, they're going to be like, you know, <laughs> they're Pay you're paying money. the iron price. Yeah, exactly. No, I just uh, to me, like I look at those emails, I'm like, oh, this is this is like actual work. I don't want to do that. I know you could you just know? be like shooting the breeze and playing video games instead. <laughs> But it's, you know, you got to prioritize some stuff. And it's like, well, one more Bellatro run or file your taxes. <laughs> well. <laughs> I got the extension, you know. I think that's good till October. Oh, man. You know, it is only, it's only May. Yeah. But also, I did read an article. I don't know if it's true or not, that U.S. audits are going to be up 90% this year. So then that kind of made me regret extending. Hmm. But it's just like, isn't that like 80% like just random chance anyway? It's just like, you know, for whom the bell tolls. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I don't think I'm going to get audited. I'm Why not even I? like, the thing that worries me about getting audited is not owing money. Like, I don't really, I mean, I care, but like, what are you going to do, right? The thing that bothers me is like getting like a letter in the mail that's like, hey, oh, you, you, claimed this uh, $13 Steam purchase in 2017 on your taxes. What was it? And can you like provide evidence you used it on your stream? I'd be like, you know what, brother? Here's an extra 13 bucks for you. I'm not going back in the, in the video catalog to, to go through that. That's insanity. Or is it because you didn't want to admit to paying $13 for that game that blew up Mathis' mm. YouTube channel? <laughs> what was the name of that game? I couldn't think oh, of the name of it. Yes. <laughs> oh. Years ago, this I got audited and the state said I owed 35 bucks. I mean, like, I guess what I would say is it's easy to look at that and be like they wasted their time and money. But also, like, it's a great circumstance for you. Kate didn't get audited, but this year, like, with her taxes, they were like, hey, we've reassessed a previous tax year. And, like, you owe a little bit more money. Do you know how much more money she owed? $6.63. 
But they can't do that. <laughs> like How you, can they do that? We're really like you. You had. Uh, I'm sure you just put it into the computer, but it still costs electricity, and then like they have to mail like a certified letter to her, and we got to put in a check that we have to get from the bank, and then we got to put a stamp on it, and a mail carrier has to like sort it and load it into the truck, and you're like, but. But they can't just change the rules like that. Didn't she already pay taxes? Yeah, but they like, you know, they're busy. So sometimes they're like, we don't really get to it for like seven years or something like that. So the money's just sitting there? No, I think they spent it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right, hang it's in here. doing business. It's, I think it's good, because like every time I go outside and I see like the quality of our public services, I'm like, this is money well spent. Everybody's outside loving life, being happy. Every, all of our infrastructure is in good condition. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has any complaints about like the wait times in the medical system or anything like that. So I think it, you know, it's business as usual is working pretty well. Oh, uh, let's take out big boy. I feel like this guy was the cover art. And he's not just a boss. He's he's not he's even a boss. A, he's just a dude. Yeah, just a guy. He's just a cowboy. How come they never made any good cowboy games? They've made like two extremely well-known great cowboy games. Yeah, but no one ever plays them. Wait, Red Dead Redemption? Red Dead Redemption 2? These are these are popular games, man. Red Dead Redemption 1 is good, but when's the last time you saw anyone playing Red Dead Redemption 2? Well, everybody who played it on Twitch basically killed their career because it took 400 hours to beat the game. So, like, I, I don't see that represented on the platform that much anymore, but, like, when it came out, it was every, it was every day, bro. Did you beat it? I never even played it. <laughs> There's no battle you never, even, you never even loaded it up once? What do I care? I guess you don't. <laughs> I don't See, care. To, I don't care to be part of the the AAA zeitgeist anymore. What about Grand Theft Auto? This 6? is this is the closest I get to playing Red Dead Redemption Two. You know why? You want to know why I'm not going to play Red Dead Redemption Two? Why? Press the button on your controller that brings up the map, and then look at the uh, staggering amount of waypoints that are here. And recognize yes. that every single one of them has like a to-do list of digital objectives for you to complete. But remember that only From Software knows how to make combat disengaging. And in uh, a Take-Two interactive Rockstar game, instead you're just clicking the lock-on button and pulling out a gun and pressing LB until an enemy <laughs> dies. That's why I will interface with Elden Ring, but I'm not playing Far Cry 17. I'm not playing Assassin's Creed, you know, Thunder Bay Edition. And I'm, I'm not playing Red Dead Redemption 2. You know what? I played Red Dead Redemption 1. I was insanely excited for it when it came out. I played, I don't know, maybe like eight hours of the single player campaign. And here's what, what broke me. Uh, okay, your next story mission. You can't do any other missions until you do this next story mission. Ride your horse eight minutes to get to that story objective. Then talk to somebody for two minutes. He tells you to ride your horse eight minutes in the other direction back from where you just came. Then there's like a group of bandits there. You kill them in three seconds. And then it says, ride your horse eight minutes back to where the quest giver gave you the quest. I was like, well, I don't even have like things to do, but my time is more valuable than this. Bro, that was the, that was the intern quest in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> the intern made that quest. You can't even just give them a little dab. They're in your stream right now. I'm sorry. I mean, it was, that was like 15 years ago or something, but. Well, you played Vice City though. Yeah, I was, you know, yeah. I was 14. It's the greatest game yeah. ever made. <laughs> What's, someone in chat said you have a good Fallout take. What's your take on Fallout? I was watching you play Fallout 4, and I uh, played it when it came out, and I loved it, or liked it at least. And I was watching you play it, and I was like, this is garbage. <laughs> it's, it, the graphics look like trash. The animations are horrible. The story's incomprehensible, and the combat is the worst part. You just walk into the room and then like press V and then click on everybody's head. And then the, the only good part is when their head pops off of their body and like a, a fountain of blood pours out of their neck. <laughs> That's worth it. It's, it's fun. I, I like watching you play it because every time I, I see you play it, you walk into a room, go, who's this? And then just <laughs> obliterate them in slow motion. But I was like, what was I thinking, man? New Vegas, New Vegas is peak. 
It just sucks that uh, you have to have like 3,000 mods in order to get it to run properly. But New Vegas is, is a dream. I will tell you this. Look, I know what the people want. And I, I would, you would think it wouldn't be, but it is. If you were to revisit New Vegas, I mean, you would probably set Drake Ninja numbers on Twitch. <laughs> I don't. So let's, not, <laughs> let's not use the D word. <laughs> Is this going to send us back to Kaled? I don't want to oh, go to Kaled. Yeah, don't go in there. Don't go in there. <laughs> I think we should... Uh, you want to go spend our souls and take one shot at Morgat before you go play Bellatro? Sure, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. It's good timing. Right. I guess we could just teleport to the, the Bonnie. Lost Grace? To plus two our weapons or uh, not? Yeah, I think I got a smithing stone. Okay. Oh, no, I just... I use mine, but I'll, I'll go anyway. Why not? Okay. No rush. <clears throat> but like, I think, I don't know, man. It's just... People think I'm anti-narrative. I love story. I'm just like anti many video game stories, which take like a thinner plot than like your average 90 minute movie and then put it between like 25 hours of extremely repetitive quests. And then if you're like, mm, the story is a little bad. People are like, oh, you don't like reading books? <laughs> yeah i mean I, the fallout there's one twist in fallout 4 no spoilers and i'm like what <laughs> it doesn't make any it's like bro the dude's 80 and you're calling him son and you're 40 it doesn't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> well, where, wasn't there like a, a you're cryogenically frozen at the start or something right yeah but that still doesn't make sense all right, I just need to level up. Let's get out of here. We'll go to uh, secluded cell. Let's do it. I don't know. Like, Wait, don't, so you, like, here's my people think that I'm putting on airs to be annoying or contrarian. I'm not. Like, if I look at a game like Fallout Four, the actual game itself where you pull out your gun and just mindlessly shoot <laughs> uh npcs while they run into the architecture over and over and don't even acknowledge that you're shooting them is boring bro balatro you're doing the same thing over and over and it's exhilarating you're like solving puzzles in your head you're doing like quick back of the napkin type calculations and when you play the peak hand it goes <laughs> You're That's why people with... are playing 100 hours of Balatro. They're playing 20 hours of Fallout 4, and then they're like, you know, Fallout 4 is really good. Balatro is kind of overrated, though. Well, that's why I like Elden Ring and Souls games. It's just, it's just, it's, you circle, run around, dodge, and hit. That's it. It's a big game of rock, paper, scissors. They, they broke need the to mold be anything more than with that. these games. They have a story. It's not spoon-fed to you, for the most part, in cutscenes where the bad guy's like, I'm the bad guy. The, the, the game is difficult, but, like, that makes it engaging. And, like, the actual mechanics are, are fun to interface with, whether you're fighting a Hollow or Godric the Grafted. You nailed it. That's why I think you, you can make a game. Nah, I th like it's just easier <laughs> to, to play something that someone dedicated their life to and then like five seconds be like, nah, it's trash. Why they do it like this? Why didn't they just make uh, why didn't they just make video poker again? How you doing on Estes? I got three left, but I've, I've been burning yeah. them like indiscriminately. I think we can get them. It's every day, bro. Do you think you'll watch that boxing match? There's a 0% chance, but... You're not going to watch if, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul? If somebody gets knocked out, I'll watch the clip of the knockout. Uh, but no, I'm not going to watch the fight, because it, it's a scam, right? <laughs> it's the same thing every time. They fight for, you, you know, 10 rounds, and then it's like the judges award it to, as like a draw or whatever. But the only way you can win is if you knock the other guy <clears> out. <throat> That's the rules. Well, if someone, if Mike Tyson knocks out Jake Paul or vice versa, I'll be the first one to click on the Dex Air <laughs> All right, don't die. 
one step ahead of you. All right, here we go. Bro, he's staggered. Not stunned, but staggered. Get away, get away, get away. Nice. He's All right, I got, I got no Estus. We got we to gotta clutch up here. He's going to have a, a, a stun soon. I personally guarantee it. Oh! Nice, finish him. Opie. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Lay off my friend. <laughs> she said no pickles. You got any, you got any sauce left? I got one Estus. Okay. And a dream. I'm backing up. I'm backing up on this one. Oh, it's all you, brother. Come on. The perfect bookend. Hang on here. What is this one? He shoots fireballs. No! Hang on, I need to urgently heal. Nice. One second, I just gotta urgently heal real quick. She's pulling up in the minivan. Is she gonna screech away or is she gonna open the door and say, hop on in, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> the side door is opening. I don't want to be here. <laughs> Bro, you need to fight in like a flatter arena, dude. The Voyager door slides open. She gives you the glancing look. Time freezes like you're in the <laughs> Matrix before she utters the words. It's crazy how much muscle memory I still have towards this guy. That's how you know the game's good, man. Keeping it real never goes out of style. First syllable. She says to you, I'm glad you got the flavored <laughs> ones. End scene. <laughs> oh, nice clutch up. This guy, he's nothing, bro. He's nothing. I forgot you can just like do this and kill every boss. Oh, they've, they've taken away my ability to press buttons for a second. There you go. Like, you could just do this and kill every boss. Jump attack? Jump, jump heavy, man.